Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm talking about two things, problems and solutions. I've got a photo that has some problems, things I want to fix, change, adjust, pick the word that you'd prefer, uh, and then solutions. How do I go about fixing, adjusting, changing those things quickly and easily so I can get a result that I like without spending all day on it? Let's get going. It is a landscape photo in uh, Oregon, which I love. Uh, and anyway, the most obvious thing is I need to adjust the light a little bit. I'm gonna play with color. I'm gonna play with a lot of things here, but the most obvious thing first is the light just needs some fixing because it's just way too dark. So, of course, the first thing you'd wanna do is go ahead and maybe lift that exposure. Now, when I'm usually playing around with the light, one of the things I like to do is hit the J key. That's gonna show me areas where I've got completely blown out, like in the sun, uh, and areas that are completely black, which will be covered in blue instead of red. No blue showing up that tells me everything's you know pretty good there. Uh, but I'm going to lift the blacks and whites. The blacks are going up about a 40 or so. Uh, let me get there, like 42. And the whites are going up at like a 30, 31. Uh, and in doing so, you'll see that the spot on the sun got worse. That's okay. You know, it's uh, this was shot handheld. I'm not going to have like a perfect starburst. I'm okay with that. I'll show you what I like to do about that, which I've done in some other kind of recent videos. And all I'm doing, like I said, is kind of playing around with the light because it was way too dark and it was kind of off in terms of what I prefer to have in my photos. I'm also going to cool it off a little bit. So it was a sunset. Uh, I'll often play around with the temperature on a sunset. And even though it's technically like warm because it's a sunset, I'll often play off the warm colors against the cooler colors. So I generally, not all the time, but depending on the sunset, of course, but I'll often find myself creating a little bit cooler temperature and then playing with some other color tools to uh, to kind of pop the overall color look and make sure that that sunset really jumps out. Uh, I've done all that. I'm also going to go into optics and click on auto distortion correction just because it helps. And with the raw file, I like having that there. So, so far started like that and I'm currently there and I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and close that and we're going to jump into tool number two, which is pretty much always tool number two for me. And that's super contrast. So I go to about a 21 or so here, and I do about the same here on midtones, and I do about the same on uh, shadows. And for balance, I ended up going a little bit higher on the highlights balance, a bit lower on the midtone balance, like a negative 42 or so, something like that, and a slight difference or a reduction, I should say, in shadow balance, because the problem here was I didn't really like the overall distribution of light uh, I always find, this is why I always use super contrast as tool number two, which is I can get pretty close, I feel like, with what I want it to be in Develop Raw, but I'm never exactly perfect. I love how super contrast, I think, is just the perfect tool to complement Develop Raw and come in here and make some further refinements to the light. So there it is before, and there it is after. It's not a massive change, but it's one that I like, and that's why those two tools, I think, work together incredibly well because they'll help you balance the light. And that's generally the first kind of problem that we're dealing with uh, in, a, in a photo. So, so far, I feel like we're uh, doing pretty good. Before and current state, I'm gonna hit the J key. That sun's blown out, handheld shot, lower light, not really gonna be a super great uh, crisp starburst, and that's okay. Now, the next problem I wanna work on is I wanna add a little bit of uh, texture, I'll call it, to that foreground. And Structure AI is great at that. And what I end up doing is getting a linear gradient mask, and I just drag it up here. I like my gradient zone, which is this area, the transitional area. I like a pretty generous gradient zone most of the time. And then I'm gonna come up here and go to about 28 or 30, something about like that, just giving a little bit of crunch to that foreground. It was pretty soft, and sometimes I make them even softer. Sometimes I want them a little crunchier. This is a crunchy time uh, for this one. So there it is before. And there it is now. That was a quick and easy one to solve. Now, the next problem that I really want to address is the color. I'm not really happy with the overall color. I feel like even though it's a pretty sunset, there's not enough of the uh, of the pop of warmth. And, and you might say, Jimmy just cooled it off earlier, and I did. But I did that because I want to do a couple of specific things to warm it up. The first one is going to toning, and I'm in highlights, and I'm going to go to about a 35 here. So uh, mid-30s. I'm going to leave the hue all the way to the left, which is in the red. And because I'm in highlights, it's mostly going to hit the sky. 
and obviously around the sun area and some of that reflection. So if you look at the before, you can see it's a little bit cooler. And after, now I'm getting a nice little bit warmer glow in the highlights, which I think is nice because it plays off that cooler overall feeling that's pretty much present around the rest of the photo. Now, having done that, the next thing I wanna do is go into landscape, and I'm gonna come in here to golden hour and give that about a 20. And both of these I'm applying across the entire photo. Uh, I'll often mask uh, these tools, but no masking on these. This is kind of a, a slap. I'm just peanut butter spreading uh, the color both in toning and in the golden hour across the entire photo. So before and after. Actually, the, the one with toning is technically not across the entire photo because I just used highlights. But regardless, I didn't mask it because sometimes I'll do that and mask it just into the sky. But of course, I want the reflection to pick up the same kind of color. So that's why I did not mask toning anywhere. I just let it go across the entire photo. So now I'm pretty happy with the color. And the next problem that I have is I don't really like this area around the sun. And because it's not a perfect little starburst at F22 on a tripod and all that kind of stuff, it's um, a handheld shot in lower light. It's kind of soft there. And so I'm going to lean into that. And I've done this in other videos recently. I like to go get develop and get a radial mask. And I just drop that and start right in the middle of where the sun is. And I'll click invert. And then I basically just make this thing a bit larger. I want to have a fairly generous gradient zone. Uh, maybe about like that. Let's see. I just like to experiment. I might actually pull the center part in a little bit actually and then expand some of that i want it to kind of fade softly and so that's what this gradient zone does that is your fade and that's where it keeps your edit from looking too obvious because it blends it better into the rest of the photo so now that i've done that i've got my mask in place i'm going to just go ahead and raise the exposure so i'm going to go ahead and bump the exposure up about a 32 33 i'm just making a little bit brighter and I'm actually going to take the highlights and go a little higher as well. Not something I uh, often do in photos, except in a situation like this. I'll often, I'm trying to pull back highlights, but in a situation like this, the sun's kind of blown out. I mean, it is blown out, not kind of. Uh, so that's the problem I'm dealing with. And so for me, the solution is just put this radial mask, generous gradient zone, lift the exposure, lift the highlights, and just kind of, it, it creates, as you can kind of tell, a bit of a glow around the sun. And I think it looks really nice and natural like that. So before, and that's with a little bit of the color work and, and looking at it now, I, really, I don't really like a lot of that color right around the sun because it's too intense, too yellow, just kind of off. But now it's a little softer and it blends better. And I think it kind of creates a little bit of a glow. Higher exposure, higher highlights, and a radial mask with a generous gradient zone, I think just sets you up for that. And that's, a, I, I think, a perfect solution for that kind of problem. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go into Accent AI because the next problem I have is I want the photo to pop a little bit more. I, I kind of like dramatic photos and all that stuff, and Accent AI is great at that. And what I normally, normally recommend is contain Accent AI with a mask of some sort. I'm not going to do that. I, I normally recommend that, but not always. This is one of those not always times. I'm just going to hit the whole photo with like a 22. Whenever I do use Accent AI across an entire photo, I try not to go too high because you'll know uh, from playing with this, as you start to drag it, you get all these over the top clown vomity, you know, unnatural HDR, you know, bad HDR kind of colors. I don't want that. I just want a nice little pop. 22 is subtle enough, but it gives a nice little bit of pop to the photo. So before and after. And so that's a great fix for that problem. But the other thing is I also like to play up the mood a little bit and create kind of that romantic lighting. And the best tool for that is mystical. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to put that at about a 35, which I nailed uh, right on one click. But it creates a little bit higher contrast, but it creates a little bit of a glow in the highlights. And hey, guess what? That plays into what I did around the sun. Uh, but it also casts a little bit of shadow. It's just, it's romantic lighting. And this is like a romantically lit kind of scene uh, at sunset. So the before and the after, it also, I think, adds a little bit of softening to the overall photo. I just I just like it, to be honest. I think it looks really good. And so that really helps me with that problem as well, which is, you know, fixing a little bit of the light, creating a little bit of a romantic lighting kind of mood. And I like that. And then really the last problem that I have and the solution I have is to go back into develop. And what I want to do is I feel like it's a little bit too uh, dark. 
So I, I take about a quarter of a stop, like a 0.25 or something right around there, just lift it overall exposure, and I might pull back the highlights just a tiny bit. Just, I mean, just a tiny, like a negative 10 or so, because I don't want to get rid of that nice glow that I've got around the sun because I spent some time working on it with the radial mask and develop, and then also with what Mystical did. But I want to control it just a little bit. And if I hit the J key, by the way, it's still blown out. In fact, it's probably blown out worse now than it was when I first started editing the photo, or before I technically edited the photo. But honestly, I think it looks great, and I think that looks pretty natural. And so that's what I would do in, to kind of address that last little problem. And uh, my solution is go into develop, and I like to do this on a lot of photos, is go back to develop one last time when you're done with your edit. You might have done lots of masks in lots of different places. You might have done all this custom work, but I like to come back with develop, hit it one more time globally, no masking. And it's usually like a little bit of contrast, maybe a little bit of highlights or shadows. But in this case, it was a slightly brighter, you know, lift to, uh, to the exposure and a slight reduction in highlights. And there it is before, and there it is now. And I think that creates a nice uh, overall look. And if you look at the before and after, came a long way. We had a lot of little problems that we addressed, but it's quick and it's easy here in Luminar to do those kind of things. So if you start like that, and you end like that, and if I look at the before and after window, I mean, just a massive, massive difference in the overall photo. I think that light around the sun, because that blend where it's like yellow and orange, and then it gets to this faded orange, which looks kind of gray, and then it kind of gets into a, uh, some white clouds and some blue. It doesn't really look great to me. I think it looks way better now. I think the transition is smoother and better. I think the photo uh, colors look better as well. And that's, uh, that's how I address problems in a landscape like this one. It's quick, it's easy, it's fun. It's Luminar Neo, my friends. That's one of the ways, one of the many ways that I like to use it and go about addressing different problems that exist in these photos that we love to take. So thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. See you in the next one, my friends. You guys take care and until next time. Adios.